be available to everybody um, afterwards. So uh, once you know, look at the, the recording uh, is on and, and will be available for you to look back on if there's anything that you miss or anything that you want to question yourself. So hopefully the document is up on everybody's screen now and uh, just in case anybody doesn't have it, what you can do maybe is just open your mic and let me know. Um, but I will proceed in the expectation that you can all see the document that I'm looking at here uh, on the front of your own screen. So um, what's really involved, I suppose, pre-camps, uh, the camp coordinator and head coaches are required to ensure that they are fully aware of the guidelines and safe return to Gaelic Games documents. So um, it's literally, I suppose, just bring you through the most up-to-date information and make sure that, that you have the most relevant information with regards to safe return to Gaelic Games. Uh, all those documents are available on the learning.ga.ie site uh, and literally you just put forward slash COVID-19 after it and it'll bring you to all the uh, all the various most up-to-date information um, that's available in terms of return to play in the GAA. So the coordinators and head coaches should also make themselves aware of the signs and symptoms of COVID-19 and socially physical distance guidelines uh, and they're available as well at the link on the brochure. Now this brochure will also be emailed to everybody after the meeting uh, and the links are active so once you get it you'll be able to click on the link and it'll bring you directly to all the, the relevant uh, websites and that, that that have the information at hand. Uh, coordinators and head coaches who display any symptoms must not attend cool camps, obviously. So um, we would be, I suppose, asking everybody that in any circumstance where you did, I suppose, display any of the symptoms in relation to COVID-19, that you would obviously not attend the camp, that you would notify myself or the head coach uh, if it's the evening before, the evening before, or if it's the morning of, that morning and that we could put uh, I suppose relevant steps in place to ensure that camp still goes on while uh, maybe working with the club to make sure that the, the various roles that, that you're carrying out throughout the week are still uh, adhered to and, and, and catered for. So, um, So everybody, including yourselves, I suppose, will be expected to uh, complete and submit the health questionnaire, um, which from a player's point of view will be available to you. Um, but from a coach's point of view, uh, we will be, I suppose, asking that they would they will hand that in to you and in the morning and then Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, that they will basically um, confirm for you that there has been no change, obviously, in the details that they have themselves. With regards to the participants, uh, they will be able to use the same app that is being used currently by all teams who are training. And a link, uh, sorry, uh, a link to the, your own club one will be available to each COVID officer so that you can see on the morning of the camp if all parents uh, have filled it out or if there are some parents who have not. I suppose in the event that a family hasn't it filled out, it is a must that they do fill it out before their children are allowed to commence in the camp. So it will mean that they'll obviously, if they come down to the field and they haven't it filled out, they will be asked to do it in the car um, while the children wait with them until such a time as the form is submitted. And once the form is submitted, then um, they will come in with their children and their children will be put into their group then from there. So this should ensure that all camp coaches are adequately, so that responsibility is ours. Uh, and, and between ourselves and the head coaches over the last week, we have been working with the with all the, the junior coaches uh, in relation to training them up in terms of what they'll be doing in the camps. And they'll also uh, have been given uh, a detailed presentation on uh, the COVID-19 guidelines uh, and what's expected of them in a coaching capacity uh, while they're in the camp. So they should ensure that there's traffic management plans in place for cars and for people. Uh, the coordinator and head coaches should liaise with the club COVID supervisor regarding sanitation protocols that may need to be put in place. So what we're really saying here is that one of the biggest jobs for uh, that we would have spoken to the clubs about in relation to this role of a of a COVID supervisor is that there would be a management plan in place for drop off and for collection. 
Uh, in some venues, it may be possible for uh, a drive-in where the parents don't even have to come out of their, their cars and basically drop them off at a point. In other venues, it may mean that cars have to be parked outside. Every venue is going to be different in terms of the makeup of the ground, uh, amount of land that's, uh, that's available for parking and for things like that. So what we are asking is that there would be a plan in place uh, which could be released to all parents on the Thursday before the camp starts. So um, with regards to uh, the camps that are happening next Monday, we'll be in, I suppose, uh, we'll be in communication tomorrow with the with the four COVID officers uh, whose camps are running next week. And we will discuss with them, I suppose, a fitting way to let parents know exactly what way we intend to have drop off and collection uh, so that they're aware of what to expect when they arrive at the venue and also that they're aware obviously a collection time with regards to what's expected of them are they allowed to come out of their car uh, is there a certain meeting point where they go to uh, and how the process works so we want to have as much information as possible uh, forwarded to the parents in advance uh, and I suppose this is one of the big roles that, uh, that the COVID supervisor will play. And it's one of the reasons why we asked that uh, the COVID supervisor would be from the club, because you know the club grounds, you know what's available. Um, and obviously through yourselves and for talking to people within the club, um, you would be best suited to put a plan in place as opposed to us arriving in, not knowing maybe how the grounds operate uh, with with congestion and stuff like that and um, and putting a plan in place that might work as, as successfully. So they should ensure that plans are to be communicated with parents, guardians and defence at Camp Starton. So that will all be taken care of via me. Um, so I will communicate with, with yourselves. We'll agree the plan and once the plan is agreed, I will relay that to all parents via email uh, in the days preceding the Camp Starton. So this should ensure that an isolation room is available for the duration of the camp. Uh, and this is something that all clubs must have in place anyway. So um, it should be just as simple as if you're not aware of where it is at the moment in your club, asking your full club COVID officer where the room is and then ensuring that if needed, that there is access to that room for the duration of the camp while it's going on. Uh, this should ensure that a plan is put in place for outdoor bag drops and ensure that is communicated to parents and events and suggest that all camp participants' belongings are sorted in a waterproof container bag and an area be identified for bag drops prior to the camp starting. Camp coaches are to manage their own age group bag drops. So um, the, I suppose the biggest part of, uh, of this year is obviously that uh, indoor facilities are not available, including dressing rooms to us. So in circumstances where clubs have a stand um, that, it, that would be large enough to cater for uh, groups to be able to leave their gear, but also have distance in between groups, um, that, that that can be used as a place for the bag drop. But in the event that we have certain grounds that don't have stands, that a place will be identified for each group as to where they're setting up and their bags would obviously be dropped uh, and kept close to where they're where they're actually training because they will not be able to put their bags into the dressing rooms and they won't be able to obviously put them into a covered area if no stands or that are available at the venue um, that you're working with so uh, again it's something that's going to be slightly different in uh, in every area but it is, uh, it is something that we will want to liaise to parents in advance with regards to exactly when their children comes in with their bag on their back with their lunch um, and things like that inside it. Where exactly do they go? What happens to the bags? And once, they're, once that's agreed, the coach of each group individually will bring their group over and they will, uh, they'll operate then from there in terms of making sure that whatever is necessary to get out of the bags and bring with them to their stations that they do so and will bring them back uh, to and from the bag drop area uh, if required from there. So this should ensure completion of pre-planning documents and the copies are to be sorted within the coordinator head coach resource folder. So again, that's a requirement of us as a county. Um, but inside in that is that we would have things such as our, our bag drop plans and our uh, drop off and collection plans um, and things like that. So there is a full document which we have to do for every single camp that's happening. 
Um, and as part of that, as I say, we will need uh, some of the information that we've discussed above. So should create a document to record a daily health questionnaire info. Uh, and it is the camp coordinator head coach responsibility to ensure that the parents and guardians are aware that this must be signed every day and at the beginning of camp. But as I say, that is taken care of now through the app that they are expected to fill in the app. Um, and we will be checking every car as they come in to ensure that people have the app filled in uh, on the Monday and subsequently then Tuesday to Friday, it's the same as normal training. You don't have to refill in all your details, but you do have to confirm via the app that there has been no change in your health standing with regards to the original date that you would have filled it in on the Monday morning. Um, we are also in the email, we will be asking uh, parents that if they can to fill in the, the app prior to 9 a.m., which will then obviously allow a bit of time from when you get to the field until the parents arrive to try and identify, have all the parents actually filled it out or are there parents that we need to identify on the way in to ensure that they complete the, the app uh, before we commence any preparations with their children. Yeah. So we should ensure a process is put in place to ensure that there is no or bunching at times of high traffic, e.g. E drop off collection times, uh, during activities, during breaks, uh, toilet breaks, gear distribution, etc. And this should be communicated effectively with parents, guardians and all camps. So how we as a county are going to handle that is um, from the breaks point of view, we will be alternating breaks basically between groups. So uh, instead of having 20 minute or 25 minute breaks like we would have had in previous years, We'll probably have three smaller breaks. So um, after an hour or so in the morning, they'll get a water break for maybe seven or eight minutes. Then um, after around between half 11 and one o'clock, we will then allow each group kind of to go on a lunch break, which they'll get roughly about 15 minutes or so to sit down, have their lunch, take a break. Um, and then when they go back into their area, the next group then will go and lunch then from there. So we'll be rotating the uh, basically the people that are on lunch at the time and we will be ensuring that um, by only having the minimum amount of groups having lunch together, this will mean obviously that we won't have bunching and things like that uh, at times. Toilet breaks as well. We obviously, uh, we what we will be doing is that uh, where a child needs to go to the toilet, there will be a body system where they will go with them. There will be a pathway uh, which they will have to take to go down to the toilet uh, and then return from. So we won't be having group breaks for everybody to go up um, and, and have congestion around the toilets. But obviously, as people need or as the children need to go to the toilet, they will be allowed to, to go up. But what one of your roles from that will be just monitoring to make sure that there isn't any congestion around the toilets at any stage, that if for some reason a couple of groups have children going to the toilet at the same time, that we are able to manage that they would queue up in an orderly fashion, that there would be distance between them um, and that they would then obviously sanitize their hands on the way into the toilet, sanitizing their hands again on the way out of the toilet. So they should ensure that sanitation procedures are agreed with the club COVID supervisor and a checklist should be compiled and completed before each day of camp, e.g. equipment, uh, touch points and personnel. So um, I suppose one of the biggest parts of, of the role is, uh, is to try and where possible between yourselves and the head coach to keep an eye on everybody as they enter or leave the field for any reason, whether it's a water break, a lunch break, a toilet break, whatever it is, uh, there is a necessity for people to basically sanitize their hands as they leave the field if they're going out a gate over to to the clubhouse or to a stand or to something like that but also to re-sanitize as they re-enter so if they were to leave the pitch four times during the course of it for two water breaks a toilet break um, and and a lunch break they would then sanitize their hands all four times on the way out the gate and again all four times on the way in the gate now at lunch times and at uh, water break times this will be controlled by the coaches because the coaches will be bringing their full group um for lunch break and for and i'm sorry for for lunch break and water breaks together 
Uh, but in the event of a child is coming down or two children are coming together to, to use toilet facilities and things like that, um, that between the head coach and yourselves, that you would be watching out and reminding the children that there will be pints and sanitation bottles available, um, that they would sanitise their hands on the way in and out of the uh, in and out of the grounds. OK. So another part, I suppose, um, that we have to take into account is where social distancing is not possible. So in the event of an injury, in the event of a child needing their shoelace tied, in the event of a child needing their helmet tied, uh, where a coach must get uh, close to the child in order to, to administer first aid, to tie the shoelace or to do helmets, um, then it is necessary for them to wear a face mask. So again, between the head coach and yourselves, the G would be watching out for the coaches and ensuring that in any situation like that, that no coach goes to uh, tie a lace, to administer first aid or to tie helmets, uh, or be in a situation where they're not uh, observing, I suppose, the, the two meter distancing from the child, that they then would have to wear a face mask. And if it means asking them to, uh, I suppose, to get up and get a face mask before returning, well, then we do that and we don't ignore uh, a coach if somebody thinks that, look, at there's no problem tying the tying a helmet here. I'll have it done in a couple of seconds. Um, the rules as set out for us are, are very straightforward, that a face mask must be worn where social distancing is not possible between the coach and the children. They should ensure a procedure is put in place for the refilling of water bottles and it's suggested that this is within a specific outdoor zone from a tap, a refill and drum, uh, and hands are to be sanitised before and after use. So because every child now uh, is going to have to have their own marked water bottle, because obviously there's no sharing of equipment, there's no sharing of water bottles, there's no sharing of anything like that, uh, that in the event that during the day that uh, children do need to replenish the water, that in the venues where a tap is obviously available outdoors, that we would again, a group at a time, um, basically facilitate that, that the children would fill up their water bottles and take them back. And I suppose what we would need is in a venue where maybe there isn't an outdoor tap and where we need to come up with uh, another way that the children will be able to, to fill it. And that's where things like the drums, ideas of having a water drum or something like that available, where the children can come to put their bottle into the water drum and take the water from there um, becomes becomes our, our, our best course of action. So if you do, if your club does have the outdoor tap, it will probably suffice in terms of ensuring that we can control the, the filling of the water bottles. But in, a, but in a club where maybe an outdoor tap isn't available, we will be speaking with uh, which as COVID officers to see, look, what is the best way and what needs to be in place um, for the children to be able to replenish uh, water in their own bottles if needed. So... Um, they should ensure the procedures put in place for the process of first aid treatment and it's suggested all first aid should take place in a specific specific zone by the camp coordinator or nominated first aid only to ensure no cross contamination, face covering, uh, surgical gloves and should be worn. So in the event that first aid is needed. Um, that if the child needs, I suppose, greater attention, so if they need some things like an ice pack or if they need to be brought over for a plaster to be administered to a cost or things like that, that there would be a specific area where that would be done. So the child would be brought over to that area and first aid would be administered there. Uh, what is important is that because it's you're administering first aid, that the surgical gloves are used uh, and they're dispensed of then straight away and also that a face mask is is used by the, the head coach when they're administering it. So we should ensure the sanitation procedures and processes are agreed with the club COVID supervisor and are communicated with the camp coaches and parents and guardians. So again, in the email that the clubs will get, uh, parents will be informed that of uh, basically the need for the children to sanitise their own hands on the way in and way out. Now, what we'll also be doing around lunch breaks and stuff like that, where there will obviously be potential for bunching as the groups are coming out the gate, we will be advising every child that they should bring a small bottle of hand sanitizer of their own. 
so that when they go to their bag before lunch, the first thing they do is they take out their bottle of hand sanitizer, they sanitize their hands, they then have their lunch, and when lunch is over, the coach again makes sure that each child sanitizes their hand uh, and puts their sanitizer back into their bag from there. I suppose this is just a way of trying to stop groups basically queuing up at the gate as they're coming out to be able to use the bottles that we have available. But in circumstances where a child might have forgotten or it might have been packed for them, um, or we, we'll obviously be able to, to give them a drop of the sanitizer that will be available at, at gate entrances and stuff like that. So um, it, it won't be that the child won't be able to sanitize their hand if they don't bring it, but it will just mean that we're able to, I suppose, organize ourselves better uh, around lunch breaks and that where there is the, the possibility of bunching and queuing to use that, the hand sanitizers that would be available at entrances and exits to gates. So I suppose the last point then is um, that as the camp, uh, for the people traveling from outside, just to be aware of it yourselves as COVID supervisors, but again, it's not something that we can really control, but it is recommended that the coaches would either travel on their own or they would travel with their own family and that they wouldn't carpool. Uh, it won't be possible to police that because the coaches are going to be at the venue by the time we get there, but the knock on effect would be obviously if coaches did carpool on a certain day and a coach presented themselves the following day with symptoms, we would obviously have to stand down every coach that was in that car. So um, from, I suppose, an organisation point of view, we are pushing coaches that they would travel individually or in a family setting if there are brothers and sisters or sisters or brothers or whatever, uh, basically coaching and that we have them at the same camp, that obviously they would travel together, but that people from the same club uh, or people basically traveling the same route wouldn't carpool um, this year on the way. So I suppose that's that, that that's an awful lot of, of what happened then. What we're moving on to is uh, the during the camp phase and during the camp phase, what it's really saying is, look, I suppose that we need to make sure that we are continuously on top of uh, the, the health questionnaires and data protection laws at the start, that we ensure the traffic management plan is implemented throughout the week. So we don't just start the week well, but this has to be continued through Monday to Friday, uh, mornings and evenings, and, uh, and everything is in place. This should ensure a front desk is set up with limited coordinator and parent guardian. So if a parent does need to speak to our head coaches for any reason with regards to something that happened in the camp, there should be a designated area where they can go to, to meet the head coach to discuss an issue that they have. Uh, we will not be allowing, I suppose, parents to just stand around and wait to talk. That we'll nearly want them to make an appointment, if you like, with the head coach. Uh, and there'll be a designated area where the head coach will go and meet them and they'll discuss their concerns with them from there. Um, so that would be something that we would need to be available for the head coach. It would obviously have to happen outdoors because we don't have indoors. So it would have to be away from where the other parents are collecting their children uh, and things like that, but still visible so that the parent in question is able to find it easily. You should ensure the pitch layout is marked off before the beginning of every day in camp. So the head coach will look after all of that. They will ensure that the coaches have got their equipment. At, they'll be at the pitch at quarter past nine. Uh, they'll get their equipment at quarter past nine. They'll then go out, they'll mark out their area, they'll mark out their first activity for the day. And they'll be back over then around 20 to 10 or so, but before quarter to 10 in order to be given a role uh, to help out in terms of the drop offs uh, of the children in terms of making sure they get into their groups, the traffic management system, whatever role that both yourselves and the head coach see fit for them, is they will they will be implementing that from quarter to 10 when we open the gates until 10 o'clock. We are going to be saying to all parents that they should not arrive pre-quarter to 10. In facilities where we have gates, we are going to be asking that the gates would remain closed until quarter to 10 um, so that we're in a position to stop, I suppose, uh, children and parents congregating for a long period of time 
uh, and possibly having a build up of people being dropped off even early and then we're not getting an opportunity to check our health questionnaires and stuff like that, which could lead to, to issues if a child is dropped off and we don't have a health questionnaire, well, then they still can't join in until we can get a hold of that parent to fill in the, the health questionnaire that we need. So this should ensure that roll calls and records are maintained for each group, including the volunteers and staff. So in some venues or in some clubs, um, there's already been agreement that look that a couple of people will come in first thing in the morning and a couple of people will come in last thing in, in the evening, in the afternoon to help with the traffic management and the flow of people in and out and stuff like that. But there needs to be a record kept of exactly who was there, uh, what their purpose was and how long they were there for. So that if something did happen, then we were able to produce that for people who are volunteering, um, you know, for the 15 or 20 minutes around the, those busy peak times where clubs feel that greater assistance may be required. Uh, should ensure participants and coaches are encouraged to wash and sanitize their hands on a regular basis throughout the day. Uh, recommended 20 seconds of washing at a time. This should be reminded that after phase four outdoor areas uh, should still be used during lunch times and even that's changing at the moment because dressing rooms are going to be kept closed anyway. We were expecting them to be open by phase four. That's not happening now. So uh, lunches and everything will be outdoors in all camps, um, regardless of whether your, your camp is happening during the latter part of phase three or whether it happens during phase four. This should encourage that all equipment and facilities that are used are to be sanitized on a regular basis. And coordinator head coaches should travel from the camp with family members only, and if, mass, if not possible to travel alone. So post camp then, after the camps and after the days are finished, we should ensure that all contact tracing records uh, are retained in compliance, but that is going to be possible. The way we'll be handling that is each individual group will do their own roll call. Um, so that won't be an area you'll have to worry about. The head coach will receive back the roll call sheets every day. And uh, that tells us exactly which child was in which groups with which coaches. And if we do need to contact anybody that we have, uh, we have the direct group that they list that they were involved with straight away. Uh, the liaise with the county cool camp coordinator and club COVID supervisor uh, on all COVID related issues. And if a participant was sick or showed symptoms during the week of a camp, uh, how to contact record tracing records uh, can be accessed and if required, etc. So the last section of the flyer is really dealing with, I suppose, if during one of our camps, a child did present with symptoms of COVID-19, well, what is the process that's in place? Uh, and the process that's in place really is that two adults would escort the child to the designated room that has been made available by the club. Uh, they would then contact the parent who would come and collect their child. The parent then would obviously phone the, the GP and the GP would then decide on whether a test and that is needed. And depending on the outcome of a test would obviously then depend on what precautions we would have to take place with regards to contacting uh, people for stay for restricting their movements for 14 days, um, etc. So um, if at any stage you are in a camp where a child does present, uh, what needs to happen is that it, both yourselves and the head coach will be the two people assigned to escort the child to the to the room. The head coach will have the contact details of the parent. They will contact the parent. You will wait with the child until the parent arrives. And then when the parent arrives, they will take the child away, contact their local GP, and the health service will look after everything then from there for us. And again, um, if there's more information that anybody wants, there's a link at the bottom of the page there, which people can go on to, and it, uh, I suppose, outlines exactly how tracing and different things like that work. But that won't be any part of your own responsibility with regards to, to the role that you are taking on. So I suppose if I was to summarise in a way what really we're saying in terms of that document, um, 
the key areas that we're really looking uh, in terms of your assistance on are drop off and collection times. So to make sure that we have a traffic management plan in place whereby that we are able to uh, ensure the smooth running of the camps where the children come and go um, and that parents are not uh, basically, I suppose, gathering in crowds or lining up. So in a venue where potentially we don't have indoor in inside gates parking, what we will have, what we need, well, the obvious would be that we would have cones maybe laid out to show distance and where families were to stand as they queue to maybe come in the gate. Um, that once they come in the gate, then that obviously the children would be shown to the area that they're going and then there'd kind of be a one-way system for the parent to come back around after it being confirmed that the health or the health questionnaire and that has been filled out uh, and they leave again then straight away. So there will be no opportunity basically for them to stand around and have a chat or things like that inside around the venue. We are, we'll be asking parents to come, uh, drop their child off and leave straight away. Again, at the end of the, the camps come collection time, that they would arrive basically around between five to and two o'clock, which is the end of the camp is two o'clock. We'll have the kids already prepared in terms of uh, the process of how they're going to be collected. And then a minute or two minutes before two, parents would start to come in. We'd identify their children for them, they get their child, they head out the gate, and then they head away again straight away. The other side of things that we will obviously be asking parents in terms of pick up and drop off is that it would be one adult per pick up so that we don't want uh, we, we can't afford to have a situation where maybe grandparents will come down along with parents and things like that. So that um, we'll be asking them to be conscious of the fact that we want them to be there for the minimum amount of time that it requires and that they are in, collect their child back out into their car uh, and they're gone again. The sanitation stations then, I suppose, are the next area where, from your own point of view, that we'd be asking you to kind of just keep a monitor on, make sure that there is uh, sanitation available in all the in all the, the, the droppers that, um, that we'll have available at the entrances and, and exits uh, and things like that. And as well as that, then uh, throughout the day, that are regular intervals that you would actually uh, just go in around the tile facilities and make sure that look, there's um, the dig is a, a wipe down and a clean down uh, regularly throughout the day, so that they're kept in a sanitised manner for for the children as they use them. Um, in the areas where you do have a stand, we would be asking that you would even have a look in advance of it and designate, I suppose, how many, well, how many groups can we fit? Taking into consideration a group will probably be in the region of 10 children plus a, plus a coach, and then there needs to be social distancing between that group and the next group. So how many groups, if we have 10 groups at a camp, how many groups can we actually fit in a covered area at a time? And then this will dictate how many people or how many groups we can potentially send to lunch at a time, or in the event of wet weather, uh, it will allow us to determine uh, prioritising the youngest of the children that are at the camp, how many of them we might be able to, I suppose, give shelter to. Um, because one of the big things, I suppose, this year is without uh, shelter facilities such as dressing rooms and that, regardless of the weather um, that happens during the week that your camp is happening, the camp does go ahead and we do continue and our coaches will have to continue um, coaching no matter how bad the wet weather is. What will be said to parents is that in the event that they feel the weather is not uh, suitable for their child to be out in, then they're welcome to come sign their child out and take away their child early. There's no issue whatsoever with that, but they will be aware that activity will continue regardless of the, I suppose, of the weather. We don't cancel the camp. So it will go ahead to two o'clock if you don't come and collect your child early. Um, collection uh, and I suppose monitoring of the health survey then is another big thing for you. So making sure and I will I, I'll go through it uh, with you around a week or so out with regards to how that's going to work in the camps that you'll be in yourselves. Uh, how you can download it, how you look at it, how you how you monitor it. And as I say, we'll be asking parents to 
have the information in hopefully pre nine o'clock, which gives us an hour then or 45 minutes before we start letting them in to try and identify are there families there that haven't filled out the form. And if we know that everybody has a filled out, then we've no concerns as parents drop them off. But otherwise we'll be, I suppose it's easier to watch out for the small number of families who haven't it done as opposed to be having to individually check every single family as they come uh, in terms of speeding up the the drop off process to, in the mornings um then the other side of things obviously we just ask you to to watch out for is that our coaches uh, and our staff are doing what they're meant to be doing. So in regards to administering first aid, making sure that they're wearing the, the medical gloves uh, and that they're dispensed of the minute that they're finished. If you see coaches even using a tissue to sneeze into and things like that, they're meant to be disposed of straight away so that they're not put back into their pocket where they could potentially fall out in the grass and somebody else might end up picking them up uh, or things like that. Um, that in the event that they're uh, tying shoelaces or that they're tying helmets or that they do have to, to do first aid, that they're wearing a face mask when they're in close contact with the child. Um, and then I suppose the other side of things is if a stand is available to us and it's a sit down stand where children are sitting, well, when one group leaves, the stand has to be sanitized down prior to anybody else being able to to use that space again so that there would be a, a requirement for uh, in the in the clubs that do have a sit down stand available where maybe you want to stagger lunches and put multi groups into it at different times. We do have to ensure between each group that the stand and the seats are sanitized down before the next group come in and sit on them. So that would be, I suppose, another important uh, area for us in, in terms of the role that that we'd be asking you to take on for the for the camp. So, um, in one way, I think maybe I have spoken enough, and there's probably a lot of questions out there. Um, also, I just I think uh, Fergal Gray, our children's officer, is meant to be on the call. So. Fergal, maybe if you're there and there's anything I've left out or you want to add, um, if you want to unmute your mic and and maybe come in at this stage and uh, and talk to the guys. Yeah. I will. Sorry, Fergal. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, uh, sorry about that. Um, Sean, there's not a lot more I could say because I think that was quite, uh, I think everyone would agree, comprehensive in relation to um, the detail that you provided. So, um, give it, it's quite a bit of detail, um, but the, 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 the sheet that Sean was uh, referring to, obviously you, you either have that or you will have that, um, and it will be an excellent reference uh, for you throughout the, the week that the camp was actually on. Uh, at your at, at your club, um, Sean just did mention uh, two things. One was that there is a county COVID uh, committee, which is uh, chaired by our chairman, which is uh, Mr. Michael Hogan. Um, and certainly, Sean, that group uh, and members of it will be available uh, if required into in supporting um, the COVID supervisor uh, yourselves through uh, the week of the camp. Um, just one point, just to pick up on, on if you don't mind, Sean was, um, and it's 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 good to hear you're getting the even the small bits, but particularly where, for example, the tissue, and uh, the what do you call it, uh, the young people using the tissue, obviously the blow of the nose, and obviously that has to be what do you call it, got rid of, uh, and dispense of right away, and that's where your hand sanitizer should come in to allow the kids then just to give the hands a quick. A quick rub uh, afterwards uh, as well. Um, I, I I can't say any more, Sean. I think you really you, you've covered it all. Unless there's questions there that we might be able to assist with some with some of the answers. Lovely, thanks, Fergal. So the way I suppose we're going to just handle the question and answer section, it just so that people aren't speaking over each other in that. If you put your cursor into the middle of the screen, uh, you'll see a bar appear and it'll have your camera, your microphone, uh, it'll have three dots in it, but it'll also have a hand. 
if you click on that hand, it'll show up on the screen for us that basically you're raising the hand and that, that will indicate that you want to ask a question. So if I see that, I'll then invite you in to unmute your mic, uh, ask your question. And I suppose once your, once your question has been dealt with, if you unmute your mic again, just so there's no interference coming in if somebody else wants to ask a question. So look, we will open it, I suppose, to everybody on the call now that uh, if you do have a question, if you just raise your hand, uh, just press on the, the hand symbol that's there. And uh, what I'll do is uh, as I see hands go up, I'll invite you in for any questions that you might have. Veronica, your hand is up. So if you want to go ahead, if you want to unmute your mic and, and ask away. Yeah, hi, Sean. Um, thanks for all that info. Um, there was just two points I have there. One is in relation to the app. Now, I'm used to seeing the app for the Ballybahan GA Club. But what I want to know is, you know, when person a person registers for the health questionnaire, will they is there a link like they'll, they'll say they're going to a cool camp or will they just put the link to Ballybahan and they put their name in there? No, it'll be a direct link to a cool camp. So uh, as of this week, if you were registering for the first time on the app, what you would now get is as well as getting an option for your club, you get an app, you get an option for camps. So you they'll click on cool camps that then they'll be asked which county they're going to, then they'll be asked which venue they're going to, and then that that will allow ye access. So you'll have the access to your own individual camp so from a Ballybahan point of view you'll be able to see everybody in Ballybahan that's registered on the app uh, and has completed it now what we will also have just in case the, in some locations the app isn't isn't working or we don't have um, we don't have the coverage that, that, that allows it to, to operate we will have a few spare uh, hand ones where they can actually physically fill them out for us and give them back to you um, but it just from a recording point of view, it is easier if everybody uses the app because obviously the information is there at hand at the click of a button, uh, as opposed to having to store the store the papers uh, and keep them as proof that they were they were filled out. But but yes, it's um, there is there's a new function on the app as of this week that allows the mm -hmm. people to select cool camps and then select the individual cool camp that they're going to. So that information is only available to the to the COVID officer who has who has a visual on the on the cool camp. Great. And so that means then that even if if you have a 10 year old that has registered for Ballyvon GA, they still have to go back in and register for the cool camp as well. Isn't that correct? Yes, for the week yeah. of the yeah. for the week of the camp, they're going to have to register as a member of the camp on the app. And then yeah. each day they'll have to update, even if they have to update for training purposes at the other side of it for the club, they have to update the camp also for us. So they'll have to do it twice that way. Yeah, um, in relation for it to be visible to to both ourselves and to the to the club person who needs it for training. Great. And my other question then is in relation to the sanitising gear and the first aid gear. Do ye supply that, or is the club supposed to supply supply it? No, we will be supplying. Uh, we'll be supplying the sanitation side of things, and our head coaches will have their first aid kits and stuff like that with them. So, um, there's no requirement on the clubs to provide uh, face masks or gloves or any of that. That'll all come with. Uh, that'll all come with our head coaches. The head coaches will also bring the the sanitize the sanitation uh, bottles and stuff like that that we'll be able to put around the around the ground for the day of the the camps. And I suppose year role will literally be to identify the points where they will suit best and then mm -hmm. obviously to just monitor them to make sure that there is sanitation in all the bottles uh, and that we don't run into a situation where we think the children are actually sanitizing their hands, but there's nothing coming out, you know, just to just to keep an eye on it to make sure that, it, that they're kept uh, stocked up throughout the week. Right. And my last question then, sorry, now is um, will we know before the camp starts? So, so to give us a chance, say we're starting now on Monday. Will we know by Sunday, OK, there's 50 children coming, so we're going to be broken into three groups. So it'll give us a chance to have, you know, if we need extra tables because everything will be outside for us, we've no stand. You know, mm -hmm. So to give us a chance to have stuff there in place, will we know yeah. that Sunday evening. Yeah, so the way the website works is that at 12 o'clock on the Friday before the camp, which is which is a day and a half away now for yourselves, mm -hmm. uh, online booking shuts down. 
So nobody can register from there on. We are not accepting walk ups, so there will be no uh, there'll be nobody there'll be nobody walking up or paying on the day or anything like that. So it will be a, a case of point where um, if it's 51 that's booked in on Friday at 12 o'clock, it's 51 that's going to be attending. And what we'll also be doing is we will be getting our head coach who will be there on the week of the camp, running the camp for us. And I suppose liaison with ye um, to ensure that ye have the information ye need, they have the information that they need um, over the weekend in advance of the camp on Monday. So that, look, when ye meet at a venue at nine o'clock on Monday or quarter past nine on a Monday morning, that it isn't that you have to run through everything with them, that they nearly know exactly what's going to work. And it's a matter of everybody doing their part to get things right before we open the gates at quarter to ten. Great. That's great. Thanks very much for that. Thanks. No problem at all, Veronica. So if there's anybody else with questions, if you want to, to raise your hand there, we'll. Don't be shy. Any, if there's anything at all that you heard, even that concerns you or you want to question, feel free to, to come in at any stage. Um, okay. what I'll be, I, I'm happy to stay on the line basically until the last person has gone off. And if anybody has an individual question, even that they want to ask, um, but maybe just before we wrap up, just, I suppose, to reiterate, look, you are very much part of a team with regards to the way that the cool camps are going to run. Uh, our head coach is the one with the overall responsibility to make sure everything runs as we want it to run um, from a county point of view. Um, but they'll obviously need a lot of cooperation and assistance uh, from yourselves on, on areas like the uh, sanitation and the drop offs and and pickups and things like that. And really, um, to a degree, that is that that's going to determine how parents, I suppose, will view with regards to the precautions that we're putting in place. Um, we are we're obviously very, um, very aware uh, that, look, we don't want to be in a circumstance where at any stage we have a build up of people trying to get into to our camps on a Monday morning or that we have a build up of people even coming to watch the end of camps and stuff like that on, a, on any evening of the week that, look, in the times that we're living in um, and the guidelines and, and the procedures we have been given, it's important, I suppose, that we do follow them. And that's why we feel your role is such a vital role in the success of the camps this year, because uh, although our coaches, I suppose, are, are used to coaching, our head coaches are used to running camps uh, as they have done for, for many years, that this is a new element um, that we felt needed a, a sole focus on this year. Um, and that's why the, the role, I suppose, was, was brought into being for for, for this year ahead, starting Monday, and obviously uh, over the next five weeks, everybody on this call will will have had their camp at some stage or, or another. Um, within within six weeks from today, we'll we'll actually be nearly finished the camp, so um, every, everybody will 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 have that coming on them, ticking fast. What I can assure you is, look at from Veronica's point of view and and, and Christopher and Ina and. Uh, and Sean in 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 and that that um, with the camps that are on next week, you will be hearing from us again tomorrow, and we will actually be discussing, I suppose, the the minute details of what needs to be right for your camps for next Monday, um, and then from there over the weekend, your head coaches will obviously uh, be talking to you about what needs to be in place or what you need from the coaches in order to make sure that look at come Monday morning everybody knows their roles and their responsibilities and and the part that they're going to play in the in the camps for the week that they're with you. Um, but I suppose the, the biggest thing is look although this is this is your area things you are very much part of a team. The team the team is going to be made up of everybody head coaches, junior coaches, yourselves and it's by I suppose working together uh, and and by keeping an eye on each other and making sure that things are done right will we'll ensure, I suppose, the, the success of the camps in your own area. So um, don't feel that you're just because 
your role might be off the pitch that you're isolated from the group you you'll very much be be seen as part of the as part of the team that will deliver the the hopefully successful camps across the the 27 venues that we will have uh, running over the over the next uh, five weeks or so as we say so look i will give another minute or so if anybody wants to come in with a question or not uh, if not i will be emailing out the copy of today's presentation to you uh, via email tomorrow. I'll also be putting a copy of the, the video that, that we have recorded here so that you can watch it back if there's anything that you want any help with. My details are at the bottom of the emails that you would have received. So by all means, if there's a question or if there's anything that you want to come back to me on, feel free to drop me an email or give me a ring uh, on anything that, that you might have questions on after today. So uh, as I say, look, I'm happy to take questions if people have them. Uh, if not, uh, you can feel free to to log off, and uh, I'll be talking to to all of you over the the coming weeks as we get closer to your own camps from there. So, look, thanks very much for your attention tonight. I hope it was beneficial for you, and um, and look, uh, as I say, I'm here to to help in any way that I can in terms of assisting you in preparations uh, as we get closer to your own camps. So, um, look, thanks very much, and if people want to stay on and ask a question themselves. I'm happy to, to stay here until the last ye uh, has logged off, as I say. So thanks very much, guys. Thank you, Sean. Thanks a million, Sean. Thanks, Sean.